okay, we're tired again today. I'm really, really tired now. Yeah, my oh, both are, both our hands, both our hands, the calluses, plus the actual muscles in the hands from using axes and pickaxe and shovel and milking. And milking. Oh, milking is such a job. My fingers would cramp up halfway because I'm not used to oh, it. Oh, I know. So my, our both our hands are just killing us. We need like a day and a half just to rest our hands. This oh. is really hard living like this. There's nothing easy about it. There's nothing fun, romantic, or anything <laughs> about it. Well, anyway, okay, we're going to bed. Can I can turn off? Huh? Yeah. Oh. Want me to get you another blanket? Oh. No, I've got two. Are you sure that's enough? Yeah, my feet are killing me. No running water, no hot water, no toilets, no central heat, the cold. I mean, anyone who's from around this area, you know what the winter's like. You will want to quit for sure. The mosquitoes, the black flies, the heat, you're going to be dirtier than you've ever been in your life. There's no deodorant. I mean, this is primitive, dirty, and hard. You're going to have to work. Really Jamie really Brown really has hard. just gone public with the plans for a new TV show that will bring the past to life. Hundreds have come to a meeting room in Winnipeg, hoping they'll be picked to be the stars. Here's the deal. Two couples will be paid $100,000 apiece if they complete a year living as prairie settlers. It's a return to life in the 1870s, a struggle to survive in the rugged Canadian heartland with only the tools of the time. But who would want to do this? built our own uh, log home out on our trap line, which we did right from scratch. Hardworking and resourceful. Pretty crafty and handy, too. We already have a log cabin that we built of our own with no running water or electricity. So I've lived in the uh, high Arctic in Canada's north, working in remote areas, so, and Karen's a farm girl, so we don't see it. Uh, we, see, we know there's challenges that lie ahead, but we're totally prepared and ready to face them. Sounds like the, the, the perfect contrast of simplicity and difficulty and, like, you never take anything for granted ever again, like nothing. So I think it would be the most awesome experience ever. I like the body language. Look how close they're sitting together, yeah, right? I like that. The production team gets together to wrestle with a pile of applications. There's more than a thousand hopefuls and some tough choices to make. Because no one has written a job description for the perfect pioneer. He's an artist. At least not in this century. One of the things I'm looking for is a sense of humor. Yeah. I am looking for a certain twinkle, a sparkle. I think that's going to be incredibly important. Sydney Suiza works for History Television, one of the broadcasters. You've met Jamie. He's the executive producer. This is his idea, and it's taken him three years to make it happen. I think it's really important for us to get an insight into what the settlers would have gone through to keep them in the settler world as much as we can. But they will always be from the 20th. First century. It is a time warp in that Mike sense. Scott is the producer for the film company, Credo Entertainment. Yeah. And Andy Blick is the director. Today, the challenge is to come up with a short list of candidates. We don't want anybody lazy. Everybody. Everybody. Young and old. If they're going to survive a year on the homestead, everyone agrees they'll have to like hard work and love farm living. But they're at the age now where they won't travel each other. Oh, she's going to get up. Oh, that's, there enough. Go. that's enough for that. <laughs> the next day, at an organic farm an hour south of Winnipeg, the 30 finalists are brought together for the first time. They're here to listen to Gerard Dubé. He's wise in the old ways. This is as close as they'll get to life as it was, and as it will be for two lucky couples. There's four pails here. If some of you want to drop the, uh, drop some barley in there, just uh, keep your head up, though. The sheep like the barley. It's also a chance for the production team to see who's comfortable around the animals. And it's an opportunity for Jamie to discover who's really passionate about stepping into the past. So what would bring you guys all the way from Ontario to do this at your own expense? Most of your own expense. <laughs> Um, it's been our dream for a couple years. We've been reading a lot of books on homestead, and it's something we're just fascinated with. 
and um, we've got a lot in our background that make us interested in it, and it's just an absolute dream. And we've got the toughness and the stubbornness to do it. But it will take more than enthusiasm and camping skills to make it. The settlers have to feed themselves. Um, the only thing I worry about is uh, for a milking cow is uh, for her teeth to freeze. And that you're looking at a lot of problems if, if that happens. They need shelter in the winter. That's a good question. Just like the first pioneers, there will be livestock to look after. There's a lot to know. And much of it has been forgotten. People in, the, in those years, 1850 to 1870, um, they came, they came to wherever they were going to with an incredible luggage already from, because they lived, that's how they lived their lives then. They lived their lives in, and they learned on a daily basis from when they were this high. It's very different for you guys. It's, it's going to be very difficult for you to, to live that, that life. Just to, to make the food from scratch, is, it's just the learning that, and this is a very fundamental, fundamental thing that we've totally forgotten in our society is where our food comes from and how, what the, the amount of work that it takes to prepare it. What I see is, is uh, the physical strain on, on a person. That, that first, first three, four weeks is going to be very, very challenging um, to, the, to the, the patience of your, of your, uh, your, your victims. <laughs> <laughs> By the same token, it's a, a tremendous challenge for you to to have this chance, boy, I mean, it would be worth a million. If I didn't have this farm, I would apply to you. Don't kid yourself. <laughs> nice go. <laughs> I don't have any. I don't have any uh, second thoughts about about the uh, about the going. I think he's no, right. That's exciting. I think he's, I think right he's very right. Oh, yeah. But that's what you're going to have to face. Yeah. The basic uh, consensus was, yeah, that's right. We're going to have it tough. It is going to be tough. No two ways about it. They move on to a nearby Mennonite museum. The production team is getting to know the candidates. They're getting to know each other. Tom Janzik is a nursing student and a world traveler. Kirsten Carmen is a field hockey champion. Both grew up on farms. Tom Zielkowski just retired after 30 years as a bus dispatcher. Some here are seasoned farmers. Others are at home hunting and trapping. The show will only be a success if the homesteaders have just the right mix of personalities, skills, and experience. Because all the research is showing that everything about pioneer life was primitive and difficult. One of, one of the largest problems uh, that they faced, of course, was in the spring. The, this, this sod hut would be warm, and uh, as snow would melt outside, where would it go? The lowest spot, which is your sod hut. Flooding in the spring was a perennial problem, and it was miserable. The, the accounts were that uh, they, they wished they could go back to Russia at that point, but they had no choice. They couldn't go back. But no one here is talking about quitting, and the producers are confident that all of these finalists are great pioneer material. The final step is to send them for a police check and psychological and medical tests, to be as sure as possible that they're up to facing a year of relentless hard work and isolation. And what if they can't cut it? This is our worst fear. Uh, and it's one of the reasons we focus so much on their commitment to this and their ability to really see this through. Uh, if they were to quit, we would risk losing the whole show. I mean, we stuck it out for 30 years together. We've never, we've never taken on anything that we could never do. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom and Pat Zielkowski are here for a final interview. They're strong candidates. Their children are grown, and although they've had city jobs, they live on a hobby farm just outside Winnipeg. And most important, they've always dreamed of returning to the simple life their parents knew. Well, the reason I'm asking if you can stick it out is because we want you to be our settlers. You're our choice. You're the ones we want. Thank you. Thanks. I think we may get a few tears here. <laughs> Well, oh, I think I think basically yes. I think really we can do it for you. These will be your very good friends All for the right. next year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, done, That's good. Okay. Oh, good. Mr. Hunter. Yes, he is a hunter, and he's great with the black powder. Yes. He's a worksman. Yep. Hi, you guys. It's Jamie. Doing? Good. How are you? Oh, um, we're we're nervous. Just get it over with. <laughs> If you found out uh, today, when would you be here? We'd have to get rid of our jobs, and we'd, uh, our parents would pack our place up for us. Well, it would either late Friday night or first thing Saturday morning. 
Okay, well, I would suggest you get going on it now, because you're the ones we want to go with us on uh, on the Settlers. No way, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, okay, yeah. do we have to keep talking, or can we run uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who's the other couple? Ah, yes. <laughs> you might want to just say hi. It's Tom and Pat uh, Zielkowski. I know you met them on the weekend. Retired couple? Yep. Retired man? Yes, the retired man. That's him. Very good. That's him. Yeah. Like the last few days, we've really been thinking about everyone's skills and everything. We knew you guys were going to get it. Well, these guys will tell you our reaction when they told us who it was. We were both excited because that was our choice. <laughs> <laughs> of all the young couples, you were the choice. So. Oh, that's that's great. Nice Thank you. Yeah. No, we're really, really looking forward to it. And I think it'll be really neat. Are we going to name our farm? <laughs> I think we're going to go, we're gonna have to. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy acres or something like that. <laughs> I gave my work like absolutely no notice. I, I worked like four hours yesterday and three hours today. Well, it's not like you had anything else to do. No, no, we only have, you know, three days to totally shut our lives down, so that's plenty of time. The garbage picker. There's no time to waste. Frank and Alana Logie have a life to pack up. Alana is on leave from the hospital where she works as a psychiatric nurse. Frank is abandoning his job as a millwright. Alana's mother is wondering what will happen when they come face to face with their first Manitoba winter. Sometimes I think about how cold it is in Winnipeg. Uh, I lived get, there for 12 years. I'm sorry. Do they get blankets or anything like that? They have to make it all? Or... Well, they have blankets, but they won't be able to insulate their house. Mm -hmm. His dad really loves history stuff, and all he does is read history books, and this is all stuff his dad makes for fun. Yeah. Frank and Alana will bring hunting and wilderness experience to the homestead. The bone handle. And some family treasures handed down from Frank's father. He made his gun, and he said if I do anything to damage it, he's going to come out there and use it on me, so I have to be very careful. Keep going to see here. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Brought me in the mud. Where's the water? Where's the water? <laughs> There's one more big decision to make. Pat and Tom check out the first of two possible sites for the homestead. The landowner has turned up with a map of the original settler's trail. You can show us the cart trail. Well, this is, this is the cart trail that comes through here. Basically what you see here, this is all untouched land. Six to eight foot uh, dug well, be all kinds of water. Because at home, if we dug a basement any more than six feet deep, we had water in it all summer long. This is good. Yeah, very good. This old homestead is 40 minutes north of Winnipeg, an area settled by Scottish immigrants more than a century ago. I figured this is a good spot for a yard site. Like, you know, you got bush all the way around. You don't have far to go for your trees. Right. And go garden. You'll never feel never feel the wind in here. No. This will be perfect. For Pat, this is a comfortable place. We lived in a little log house, two rooms, all mud plaster on the outside, and uh, this was it. It was bush, trail that went across and to a swamp and across the road the other way to Grandma's house. <laughs> This feel like home, maybe? Oh, yeah. This is just wonderful. This is great. Better than Bald Prairie. <laughs> the other site is mostly open prairie, but it has one big advantage. Fresh water. There's a stream and a flowing artesian well, but not much bush to shield the pioneers from the fierce winds of January. That's a long way to haul water, too. Oh. I mean, where where would we going to be putting the house anyway? Here's the trees are too sparse. Back there, holy oh man, that's like almost walking a mile for water. Pat and Tom call the logies, and they make a decision. I think that during the winter we'd pretty well freeze out here. And I think we're we're better off taking the uh, you know the tree site. Yeah. And okay. uh, it sounds it sounds like the better one to me. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh...
um, file these two. That's just our car insurance. When they finally found out that they were chosen to go, we were so excited for them. But all day today, I've been kind of moping around the house, feeling so upset because now they're gone for a year. And I'm really looking forward to seeing them going, but I'm sure going to miss them. How do you describe what you're feeling right now? Or can you? I can't really. I wish I was going. Very, very much. He's doing what I've uh, always been doing. There's no words to describe it. He's, he's going to have a wonderful time. He's going to have a great life, and we're going to miss him desperately. They're a great couple, and they will just do wonders with this. They really will. It'll change their lives totally. Take care of my clothes. I will. In the saying of goodbyes, we hear a distant echo from the past. A century ago, the promise of a great adventure in the Canadian West meant a long and often permanent separation from family. For Frank and Alana, the pioneer experience truly begins here. get together for the first time. Jamie reminds them of their responsibility, to stay true to the experience of a life on the prairies in the 1870s. Everyone agrees that means no trips to McDonald's. You know, it's just time for that Big Mac, and, and uh, someone decided to make the trip, and hoping that Andy, because Andy had said he wouldn't be back till Friday, and they figured in four days they could make it to a McDonald's and get back. <laughs> no, yes. So. This is an experiment, a social experiment, and its integrity is based on the honesty and the integrity of what you do. It, if you compromise us, the experiment is defeated. Its power will come from your integrity and the belief in the audience that you won't make it. You know? And your, your, your task is to make it and, and in the way that we all expect you to try to do that. So that's really important. 48 hours to go. The pioneers are introduced to their work partners, Duke and Diamond. Percheron draft horses. They're gentle and experienced. And that's a good thing. So who has experience with a team of horses? Anybody? A little bit, but that's about it. Not much. Not Helping much. her uncle do hay with the team in the wintertime a couple of times, but all that, nothing. No. This is going to be a real experience. Mm -hmm. I've gone on a few hay rides. That's, uh, you know, I've yeah. been in the wagon. Yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> good luck. <laughs> they were always harnessed before I got there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tom and Frank are uncovering a myth about pioneer life. The 1870s world they're about to enter is anything but simple. There's a maze of harnesses for Duke and Diamond, and a complex set of commands to learn before two tons of horse flesh will go where they want it to. I'll get between the tree, you know? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Right to the trees. There's no trees out there. Yeah, let's put on the driveway. We've got a little bit more room. If we had, uh, if we were trying to train them on our own, we'd never make it out there. Frank soaks up the lesson. Soon he and the others will be alone with Duke and Diamond, with no one to turn to for help. And when you're plowing, do you usually tie these just around you, behind you? Well, what kind of plow have you got? I'm not sure. I don't know if they have a plow yet.
Uh, I think it's uh, it's going to take a lot for us to. Whoa! They don't like you there. Um, it's it's going to be a big experience learning to try and plow with this. I think uh, we're going to be plowing halfway across the, uh, the the field. Uh, trying to get it straight, I think it's going to take a lot of work. So why weren't you guys out there trying this? Because we're going to bake the bread and do the laundry. <laughs> Men's work. Either that or they have to bake bread, one or the other. They got a choice. <laughs> We'd like to try, but we got to split the evil work and we got to do some of that washing. <laughs> yeah, we could. We could take the horses to town and they can wash on the washboard the long underwear. They got to be willing to split. The evil, what's the evil about washing clothes? Now, now, you, on a washboard? You, you guys remember that when you cleaned us, we don't do any laundry. Just remember, you're not doing any of this. So that's the, uh, the trade off there. Keep going, man. They can cut out too. We are very blessed by this special day and adventure that our family is going on. And we thank you, Father, for the blessings of all of the friends here today and family. Amen. Come. It's Tom and Pat's turn to say goodbye. Friends and family gather to wish them well. And wonder what will become of them in the weeks ahead. Dad always said, you know, 100 years ago he would love to have lived, so now he gets his chance. We think they're nuts. Yeah. We think they're but, nuts. But you know, we also wish them the best, you know. I don't think anyone can imagine how difficult this would be. And, mm. and I'm worried that maybe they've just looked at the adventure side of it and they haven't thought the whole thing through, you know, really. Because there's so many things we just take it for granted nowadays. So, yeah, I'm a little worried about them. <laughs> 150 years ago, life was a lot tougher to survive. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, I don't really think any of us can imagine what it was like. <laughs> Tell you? I can't even talk. <laughs> Happiness, joy, no, stuff like that. Just a little sadness, too. Oh, I'm going to miss you. Take care. They won't let me bring those either. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> those would have been you guys better not lo lose those when I'm away. That's all I have to say. So. It's strange. It's weird. That's what I did all morning. I thought this is my last bath. This is the last nice toilet. This is the last breakfast. I mean, it was so weird today. We were going through all the last. Are we worth anything? <laughs> it's the final wardrobe call, and the press is waiting. Tom and Pat are nowhere to be found. They arrive late with a bad case of the jitters. There's a sense that something's going wrong. Uh, it's windy in here. Did you oh. hear the fan going? No, actually, I didn't. Oh, yeah, I am shaking. I'm trying to settle down. <laughs> Time constraint. What the heck are you thinking? <laughs> I'm always for a good adventure, and uh, I'm a hard worker, and basically it's, a, it's like a dream. It's, uh, you know, when I seen it in the paper, I said to my wife, phone this number. I wasn't worried about the price. I couldn't care if they were giving you nothing. I said, phone this. This is for us. This is where, something we want to do. Um, I'd like to, to get a sense of, in your heart of hearts, what are the emotional tests that you're going to have to go through? It would be crazy to think that everything's going to be lovely and wonderful the whole time. Because and we've talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. The four of us are pretty outspoken. We say what we feel, so we're not going to be holding anything back. We, we have, can't hold grudges. We ha yeah. can't hold grudges and let it eat us up inside, and we just have to know we ha learn we have to get over it. It's like a marriage. No marriage is perfect. It doesn't have an argument, right? And if they don't say they didn't have an argument, then there's no love there. That's my belief. So. So you love us? Yeah, I love you. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're just like my kids. You're almost you're the same yeah, age as my children. As children so. So. June 6th. It's time to leave the 21st century behind. Time to pack a new life of old things. The pioneers will have all the staples they need to get started. And $500 in 1870s money. 
a healthy grub stake to see them through the year. They'll load more than 400 items, all of it recommended by experts, then hunted down in basement corners and backyards, some antiques, some reproductions, everything as close to 1870 as possible. But one question remains, will it all fit? Hard to, hard to express. I'm so excited. I can't. I can't believe we actually did it. I mean, it's, but this is the reality. We actually we managed to do this. We look at the. You know, it's all there. It's on the cart. They've got the stuff they need. They're ready to go. They're taking their last sips of Coca-Cola they'll have for the next 12 months. And they're. Uh, I can tell they're ready to run. They're ready to go. They want to get this started. Daisy! For one brief moment, we see again the making of the real West. The living memory of it, dead and buried for three generations or more. Brought back to life by an old wagon, a few possessions, and a dream of finding something simple and good. It's an eight kilometer trek from the town to the homestead. A tough four hour hike in the brand new boots they've been given. But just a stroll compared to the journey the first pioneers would have made here more than a century ago. You're sinking, don't stop. Amazing, it's just bouncing right on the top. Imagine doing that for a month and a half. From sunup to almost sundown. <laughs> oh, set up our tent and uh, get an area for the animals to stay in for the night. Get the chickens down. There's quite a bit of stuff to do, actually. It's late afternoon, and there's no time to rest. The pioneers are starting from scratch. Frank and Alana go straight to work cutting poplar trees for tent poles. All the animals need attention. Daisy has been waiting for hours to be milked. Whoa! Don't you dare. You had enough of this? Got enough for you? It's a job they'll be doing twice a day, every day for a year. Meanwhile, there's a battle raging in the chicken crate. It seems there's too many roosters. Hey, you two. I've never seen roosters. Right yeah, now. I've never seen roosters lay eggs before. So we're going to be eating chicken soon. We're going to need ones that actually lay eggs. That's going to be it. We we have a slight problem there. We have what? That's why they're fighting so much. What? They gave the wrong drawing for the tent. That's not what the tent looks like. Oh. oh. Yeah. What you have to do is you have oh, to have need more. three sets of poles. So we're going to be up till midnight. Oh. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, but what are you gonna do? We have lots of frustrating things. So. What's for dinner? Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> you seen it yet? Dried meat. We already had it. That was our, our cooking. <clears throat> okay. no, I need the production more. team is worrying about Tom and Pat. As the evening wears on, they seem more and more upset and disoriented. And there are unnerving jokes about leaving. <laughs> That's enough already. Screw it. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what? What did you say? I said we're, giving, we're packing up. We're going home. We're, we want our old places back. <laughs> uh, Come on, that's not the guy. I heard the press conference. 
reference. Come on, what's with that? Well, we're reloading the wagon, so that's it. We're leaving. It's a struggle to decide where to put everything and what needs to be done first. The horses are thirsty. Before dark, someone needs to go out in the bush and find some water. Are you going to go? You should get water from the slough, though. Oh, where is it? I don't know. It's just down this way. I'll take them one at a time, I guess. Yeah, and do you want to give me a hand now, Lana? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try this again and try and get done right this time. Actually, throw those ones out of the way. The settlers are confronting the realities of life in the 1870s. I can't hear you. A world with no streetlights and no maps, and no one to help them find the necessities of life. There's supposed to be a slough back here someplace. It'll have to wait till morning now. Boy. I hope we get a roof over our head. We hope to have a tent, some place to sleep. Besides under a tree, right? It's close to midnight before the tent is ready and the exhausted pioneers can go to bed. The tent has no floor, only a tarp and blankets laid out on the hard ground. This is the further pioneer adventures. All press <laughs> conferences will be done the day before you leave. Proper instructions with the right tent. And if you find the wagon gone in the morning, you'll know why. <laughs> Okay, there's a tick on my arm. I had one on my leg too, I killed it. Yeah. That's my first ever tick. First ever? First ever. Welcome to Manitoba. Thank you. Thank you, Manitoba. I love you. <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, there'll be no roosters left. We'll have one alarm clock left. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys go off at 6.30 in the morning. We nearly, had, them. We nearly had chicken for breakfast. Two of them. Nobody hit the snooze button. They wouldn't stop. <laughs> Tom left the tent with the axe. We thought he was going to hit the snooze button. But as you can see, we survived the night. We weren't gone in the morning like we told you. <laughs> Of course, I had to get up 40 times to untangle them horses, too. And then once in a while, too, we'd be thinking, all oh, our food's in here. And we'd hear all the animals, we'd be thinking, something's around here. So then we'd get up, and Tom would get the lantern going and check. So we're pretty cold. Once we have our tents made, it'll be OK, I think. Because we'll be off the ground, and we can use an extra wool blanket. Do we have wire cutters? So I have no idea. Look at the fence today. Check out this breakfast. Get off it, or we But that doesn't well. hang. Oh, no. Like, we're probably just going to uh, it. Look at how fatty that is. They picked the fattest stuff they could find. It's breakfast time. The pioneers have 10 pounds of pork and no refrigerator. The only option is to eat it. It's a good thing they're hungry. It feels like they've been up for hours, but a day of heavy labor lies ahead, and they're beginning on a bad night's sleep. I don't know. I uh, I guess you guys could make some cheese. You know what? That's that... almost impossible to do on this. No, I'm Because you've got to keep up an even temperature for oh. cheese. I can't make cottage cheese on well, that. Well, no, I'm not. I mean, that's just about impossible to do. Who wants to do the next shift? Huh? We need a milking stool. Huh? We need a milking stool. It's taking me hours. Okay, my turn's done. <laughs> Look at her go. Okay, what was I even milking for? <laughs> what? You're gonna learn. You, you know that, eh? It's your job. You're gonna learn to be like that, Alana. If I only knew, I could just pull. <laughs> Frank. 
pretty good hike to the sloop. Yes. A little over half a mile, I would say. Yeah, I think we're going to have to dig a well. Dig a well today. When we get back, we'll have to dig a well. The drinking water they've brought with them will soon run out. Tom and Frank get down to work on a well. Alana begins hand digging a kitchen garden. Pat watches as Alana struggles to break the soil with a simple hand tool. But the sod is unforgiving. Very good. <laughs> well, when are we going to get the plow, though? Well, hey, who yep. sabotaged our project? Oh, I know. We have no plow, so. Well, we can't all four of us work on a well. No, so, do you want me to keep plugging away at this? The plow is missing some parts. There's frustration and finally anger and a confrontation over the supplies. Like, what are the problems you're having? This is, is lacquered. That's why we're all getting blisters. You have to take sandpaper off it. You have to take sandpaper, take the lacquer off, you have blisters. Any, anytime any normal person buys one of these, they, they sandpaper down our axe, our pick, everything. Where we're given this and we have no sandpaper. These are chipping. Yeah, so when we're eating time. off the plates, we're eating little bits of blue paint. They, whoever put these handles on made them too short, and I don't know why. Getting the, the plow hooked up is, is a really important thing. And it's taking us an hour and a half to milk this cow morning and night, so we can throw this milk out. And this is June, and we literally froze last night. And the other <laughs> thing is the chickens. I don't know. I have yet to see a rooster lay eggs, but we yeah, have seven we, roosters and six chickens, and we don't have an egg yet today. We don't have egg, one egg, so... so. I have a skirt I had on yesterday, and the costume ladies have been great. They were working around the clock, and then a big wool dress. So, and my petticoats, honestly, Pat's off. <laughs> they come out to here, and I tie them and stuff them in my underwear, and I still can't keep them up. One of the so petticoats still Other than my one it. skirt, oh, yeah. that dress is unbearable. Like, I'm down to underwear until they get more yeah. stuff made. I need more than one skirt that's cotton. Okay, well, I phoned Credo. They're, ha they're having an emergency meeting right now. I gave them the, that list. Some of the stuff isn't on that list, so I've given them the list. They're saying that they're going to um, be out within 48 hours with a bunch of the stuff. And the other news I have is I went over to Lindsay, you know the farm we cut through and on our way through yeah. here? Yeah. I went over there, and uh, he has pressure on horses, and he'll be over on his horse this afternoon with the parts you need for the plow. Perfect. Oh, great. Perfect. Yes. Thank you so much. Like, we're not wimping out by any means, and we're not trying to say, but real settlers who did it prepared the stuff themselves. They knew what they were taking. We're learning, too, mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure out what you needed, and there were some mistakes made, so we're going to work on them and okay. fix them. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Right, so, no so no one's ready to leave yet? No, no. No, not at all. No, we were shooting the horses. and <laughs> <laughs> We had plans for everything. Well, we had everything else, the guys. It's becoming clear this experiment is going to be much more difficult than anyone had imagined. The pioneers get back to work on the well. Pretty hard. Yeah, it's all clay. We've reached a clay and, and it's down in a... Is it really that bad? But it's uh, mixed with a gravel now and it's making it really hard. Like hard pack. No, most people know what that is. I don't even really know as I've heard of it, but it's it's like Literally, like trying to, trying to drill through this rock right here. <laughs> it's a back-breaking job. And after hours of digging, there's not much of a payoff for Frank. Oh. As the work continues, Pat and Tom seem content to watch. There's so much to be done, but they withdraw. Frank and Alana are left wondering what's going on. They sense that something's terribly wrong. <sighs> Finally, Tom and Pat offer a shocking explanation. So what's happened? An absolute nightmare. Total nightmare. Tom was charged with sexual assault yesterday morning. Before, that's why he was late for the... for the wardrobe thing. So I now have to immediately call Jamie and uh, tell him I don't know what's going to happen. The Zielkowskis reveal that in the early hours of the first morning, before the final wardrobe fitting and the news conference, the RCMP charged Tom with sexual assault. He says the case involves a family acquaintance. Both Tom and Pat deny the charge. They say they'll fight it. 
But because Tom faces a court date in August, they've come to the conclusion that it may be best if they just leave. The rest of the production team arrives with some of the missing gear. Things that were forgotten. Oh, wonderful. Tea. Right oh, tea. Jane. Jane. I'm Dr. Cynthia Jordan. Jamie's brought I'm Cynthia Jordan, the psychologist who helped pick the candidates. Can talk with the two of you, sure. sure. No problem. Oh, where should we? Maybe we could just walk. Yeah, we're going to find out. Yeah, walk away from the we realize that this is just an allegation that someone's brought. This isn't something that's that we're making any judgment on at all. Obviously, you know how we feel about you. Um, I'm, I'm just so sorry about well, this. We feel the whole situation. Everyone agrees it's best if Pat and Tom go. After less than 24 hours on the land, their dream is crushed. The future uncertain. How much do you think, when I saw you this morning, your frustration, anxiety was about the stuff and how much about some of the problems that were going on underneath? Um, most of it was problems, I think. Yeah, not this, to do with the stuff. Yeah. Happened, I think it a lot to do with happening that we were the only ones doing anything, which was really frustrating for us, and we didn't know why. You know, because they, they... I was getting really scared, honestly, because I thought, this is the first day, and we really like these people, and... They're already sitting around, and it's only we're one day. We're doing everything, day. And, it, and it was getting scary. I thought, wow, this can be a hard year. Hard enough to get along with strangers. Yeah. Yeah, never mind if you're the ones doing everything for them, right? So it was a little, you know, but... And we get along fine. I mean, yeah. you know, we didn't have any problems that way. It's just it was getting frustrating as far as the work went. Well, what is the plan for you now? Um, it's been well, a day of shaken fun. dreams. Yeah. Okay. Jamie's wondering how Frank and Alana feel about continuing. Frank and Alana are worried about who will replace Tom and Pat, but they're certain they're going to stay and face the challenges of the land. We actually haven't reached water, a little bit of water tinkled out the side. So we don't actually have water yet, but... It's thin enough. Well, you hope. Hey, that's kind of a dead, like... Yeah, that's that... like rock hard. Right now the uh, pick bounces off it. Oh. So we haven't really uh, figured out how to... If we had dynamite, they had that in 1875. <laughs> they did. They did. They did. That might so that might be a... Speed up your progress. There's a feeling this adventure is worth saving. That somewhere among the finalists, Jamie will find another couple to share the quest. Okay, it's Wednesday. This is our first diary. We had a pretty crazy day, a lot of emotions, and it was pretty hectic. Um, and now we're waiting to find out. We don't know who we're going to end up with, and we hope it's a great couple and a good match, and, and that we're all compatible and can work well together. So I'm going to miss Tom and Pat. I hope you guys are doing okay. And um, hopefully we get a couple that's that is going to be just as good, and... And we're nervous about it, you know. It, it's hard to spend a year out here with anybody, and and we're hoping that there'll be someone that we can work well with. Okay. So that's our suspense for the next few days, waiting to find out who it is. And then, um, you know, it'll be a relief in a way when they come. It's funny because it, it's, it's nice in a way to have a couple of days to ourselves, even though it's a lot of hard work. But then when they come, you know, if they have different skills than we have, then there's someone else to help out too, so... We'll wait and see. Wait and see. Okay. Bye again. <laughs> well, that's not the test I uh, envisioned, that's for sure. I thought you'd have the broom all out and uh, swept all up here. <laughs> Next on Pioneer Quest, 
a new couple and a new beginning. That's not what I imagined at all. I thought the prairie. <laughs> We've got too many roosters in here. I know. This is fantastic here. Beautiful spot. Quiet. Except for the cow. Get some milk out of it. Wow. <laughs> We're really close together here, aren't we? <laughs> Join us for part two of Pioneer Quest. A year in the real west. <laughs> well, let's get going, eh? Yep. A shelf there, and a shelf there, and a shelf there. If Mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Make sense? Frank's out in the back there, and he's marked where the corral's gonna be. So when I get this done here, we'll run the corral thing, and we'll probably have the kitchen set up, the corral set up, the horses, and the cows will be happy today. The ladies will be happy, and I'll tell you, when the kitchen gets set up, I'll be happy. <laughs> Seems like Tim's a take charge guy. How are you feeling about that? Honest. Honest? Honest? We'll be out of here in a month, so Deanna won't. Deanna's got her doilies and she's worried about her kitchen being perfect, everything perfect. And if we if we live like that out here, we'll never get a thing done. <laughs>